What's going on everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. So Michigan State gets a big 40-0 win against Prairie View A&M on Saturday. Uh, that was about what everyone expected. I believe the spread might have went up a little bit. It was about 40 and a half. I think it might have went up slightly before the game. But a game that Michigan State should have and did win by a lot of points. We saw some good. We saw some what are we doing still. Three games into the season, still a work in progress with some things, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that, talk a little bit about the game, but then also what can we expect this next little bit for Michigan State in terms of the gauntlet of their schedule starting next week at Boston College. We're going to talk about that, how big of a problem are penalties going forward, and what's next for Michigan State. Before we do jump into that, though, if you could just hit that like and subscribe button down there for more Michigan State content as we move throughout the season. Basketball season starting soon as well. Should have the first practice here soon, so looking forward to covering that as well. But let's just jump right in. So 40 to nothing, Michigan State over Prairie View A&M. Pretty much exactly what we asked for. An efficient day, for the most part, from the offense. Aiden Childs, 12-19, 173 through the air, and a touchdown, no turnovers. He also rushed for a touchdown as well. Nate Carter, 8 for 91 on the ground, including a long 60-yard touchdown run. Karon Lynch-Adams did outrush Nate Carter in this game. 15 carries for 63 yards there. Through the air, really spread out. Montori Foster, most catches with 4 for 37. We saw Nick Marsh a little bit, 2 for 27, 2 for 50 for Isaiah Johnson. Jack Belling, 2 for 42. Nice to see him get going with a 34-yard catch there as well. Um, Isaiah Johnson caught on uh, Aiden Childs, one passing touchdown through the air. But what would he talk about going into the game? We would have loved to handle business mostly way through the third through the third quarter and get to see some of the backups. Tommy Schuster, I said maybe even Alessio Malojevic, depending on how this game goes. We saw Tommy Schuster and we saw why he is the second best quarterback in the state behind Aiden Childs. Eight for ten, ninety-seven yards, and then also had that one yard rushing touchdown as well. Listen, he's just a vet back there. Should anything ever happen to Aiden Childs? The staff knows Tommy Schuster back there, experienced starter in college football, can handle business. And this was, yes, against a lesser opponent per se, but just knowing he can come in, run the offense, especially with guys who, you know, they were playing a lot of second, third stringers in there, coming in, handling the offense as well, still going down, getting a couple scores late in the game, touchdown and a field goal, leading those drives. That was just nice to see from Tommy Schuster. Nice for him to get that playing time as well. At Michigan State, obviously a kid from this state that had a good high school career here as well. The defense as well, obviously the highlight there was Charles Brantley, a 100-plus yard pick six. Jordan Turner, Cal Halliday got in for sacks as well as Ken Talley. They were really making life uncomfortable for Prairie View A&M in the backfield. 9 for 17, 123 yards in an interception for Cameron Peters there quarterback and then on the ground just stifling all day only a total of 17 rushing yards for Prairie View A&M listen this was a game that we said going in this is just a tighten the screws game all right you gotta come in handle your business work on the flow of your offense and your defense moving in some new pieces um, unfortunately for the injury side uh, we saw Gavin Brocious go down with an injury there I believe that was the third quarter um, you know, I think it was Jack Belling called for medical to come over right away. They called for the cart right away as soon as he got over there, slammed his helmet on the ground. And, you know, you hate to see that. He spent all of uh, last year injured as well. Hope for a speedy recovery from him. Um, obviously don't have any updates on him. Um, I'm assuming we'll possibly get an update at Monday's press conference. But just feel so bad for him and just hope to get him out there. It was nice to see him finally in the playing group. Uh, this year getting an opportunity. So hope for a speedy recovery there. Um, in terms of the bat for MSU, it's still the penalties. You know, if you look back, uh, opening game against Florida Atlantic, you can expect some penalties, 12 penalties for 140 there. Next week on the road at Maryland, 10 for 100. And then on Saturday, doesn't get any better. Double digit penalties again, 11 for 102. And this game, I'll give you, this was a game that you knew you were probably going to be winning by big, so you were playing second, third string guys. So you expected maybe a little bit high turnovers, but you would be okay with that if your first two games you didn't have double-digit turnovers as well. So that's something I know Jonathan Smith talked about post-game on Saturday. Something, obviously, you got to address and, you know, stress, and it seems like it's been, you know, the first game it was all offense. Or the first game it was all defensive side. 
penalties for the most part, or a big majority. Second game, it was a lot of offense of penalties. And then this game, I feel like it was kind of a mix of both. So got to figure out to clean that up, especially, you know, coming next for Michigan State on the road next week, 8 o'clock at Boston College, a really good team who took Mizzou pretty late in their game and fought them hard. Only lost by 6, 27, 21 at Mizzou. So this is a pretty good Boston College team going into their place night game. You can't be shooting yourself in the foot if you're Michigan State. And then obviously going forward after that with the Ohio State's, Oregon's, Iowa, Michigan's of the world coming down the pipeline over the next month. But it starts next Saturday at Boston College. So overall for MSU, solid game. Handled your business. What you were supposed to do, obviously, besides the penalties and obviously Gavin Brosh's injury in the game, besides that, a clean day for MSU across the board if you take out the penalties and Gavin's unfortunate injury. Moving the ball, third down efficiency was good, 8 for 11 there, and efficient through the air. No turnovers for Michigan State as well. That was big in terms of confidence going forward, even though a lesser opponent in preview AM. But so that's going to do it for this one. And if you can't tell, I apologize for the voice fighting pretty bad flu, cold, something over here. But um, I appreciate y'all sticking through the video with me for this recap of Michigan State's 42-0 win against Prairie View AM. We'll be back on Friday to preview the Boston College game this upcoming Saturday. So thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.